Hi, I'm Tim Sanova, and welcome to How We Work. This video is an intro to the hiring process at Fracture Atlas, created specifically for those staff members in the organization who are involved in the process. So first off, thank you so much for being part of the hiring process at Fracture Atlas. It's exciting that more and more people from around the organization are active in this process. It's exciting for a number of reasons, not least of which is that it allows candidates to get a feel for those they'll be working with and a better sense of life at Fracture Atlas. This overview video includes a bit of our philosophy on hiring, the history of our process, and tips and reminders for those conducting application reviews and interviews. Note that this video is one part of the prep you'll need to complete before reviewing applications or sitting in on interviews. I'll include a list of the other required items at the end of this video and also send you an email with links. For me, the work to recruit and select new staff members at Fracture Atlas is one of the most exciting parts of my job. And it's also one of the most challenging. Working to identify the knowledge, skills, and abilities we need to grow the teams in our organization, and then finding those people who are stellar at it. It's not an easy process. It's something that has been evolving since before my arrival in 2009 and continues to this day. Our philosophy. The hiring process is one of the most expensive things any organization does. Get it right and we have the potential to achieve big results. Get it wrong and we bang our heads against the wall trying to figure out how to pull people out of a tailspin until they eventually pull the ripcord and leave or are fired. Then we start the process all over again. Failed hires wear on all of us as individuals, as teams, as an organization. Taking the time to get it right, even when we needed that person yesterday, will serve us best in the long run. The recruitment and hiring process is essentially a marketing campaign. Nowadays, it's called employer branding. In the end, after typically receiving hundreds of applications, we get to make one person really happy and risk turning off the rest of the applicants who are or were fans of Fracture Atlas. Keeping that in mind allows us to do things that make us even bigger fans of Fracture Atlas for those who go through the process but ultimately aren't offered a job. With each new hire, we aim to find people with knowledge, skills, abilities, and perspectives different from those of us on staff. And the landscape for this and our needs are constantly changing. Someone who might have been a great hire for us two years ago might no longer make the cut. And likewise, someone who doesn't make the cut today might be just who we're looking for in two years. So much matters about the composition of our current team, gaps in our knowledge, skills, and abilities, and what we're looking to achieve. Research shows time and again that the more diverse a team, the better its potential to perform and achieve great results. Homogenous teams have a quicker gelling period, but a lower performance ceiling. More diverse teams take longer to gel since members might not have a, the same shared backgrounds or past experiences, but they ha have a higher performance ceiling. They see things in different ways. They create more solutions and often come up with better ideas and approaches. This is what we're aiming for. After we find people who meet the required skill level, we look to hire for diversity in as many ways possible to continue building out our teams. The history. Eight years ago, our hiring process at Fracture Atlas looked much like most small businesses. We asked that people email basic documents, resume, cover letter, maybe a few references. We reviewed packets looking for things that were interesting or experienced that seemed relevant. We asked the standard interview questions. What's your greatest strength? Why do you want to work here? And we made our hiring decisions based on what we learned and primarily used our, our gut. Could I spend all day at the airport with this person? At that time, we were also experiencing a 50% fail rate. Half of those we hired were fired within six months. They might have been incredibly smart and talented, but didn't have the skills to be successful in the position. It was at this point that we decided there had to be a better way. There had to be some way to increase our odds of success to greater than 50-50. We leaned heavily on organizations that spent a lot of time and money researching and creating great recruitment funnels, and then we began to experiment. Our experiments led through the odd interview question phase. How many ping pong balls can fit in a school bus? And the strange writing sample prompt, explain photosynthesis to a car battery or evaporation to a whale. As we continued to test and hone our approach, we got much better at identifying candidates who were false positives, 
those people who might previously have slipped through based on their background and skills, but who wouldn't ultimately be successful. With that, we started to edge slowly above the 50-50 crapshoot. We continued to hone and continue to improve the retention rate. However, we also realized that while we were much better at identifying false positives, we also felt that the process was jettisoning candidates who were false negatives. It was at this point that we started to pay more attention to how bias played out in our process. What requirements did we ask for people to, to have in the job posting? For instance, why do you need a college degree? What if a candidate never graduated from high school, but their subsequent experience makes them a stronger candidate? We're using college degree as a proxy for something that didn't necessarily need a college degree to demonstrate proficiency and expertise. We also started experimenting with the staff members who would conduct screening interviews to see if that made a difference. We started creating interview questions to directly relate them to the knowledge, skills, and abilities necessary to perform the work. What questions can help us identify a candidate's ability to do the job at, the, at a high level based on the required knowledge, skills, and abilities? What are you reading right now isn't necessarily the best indicator. It can inadvertently introduce bias. Oh, I'm reading that same book, and that wouldn't be helpful. We've also adopted structured interviews. Every person in a given round is asked the same questions. This allows us to better compare candidate to candidate rather than be swayed by that great conversation about bourbon we had with candidate number three. It's also helpful as we compare candidate interviews conducted over multiple days. In an effort to improve the level of customer service we provide to applicants, in 2016 we introduced an applicant tracking software called Jazz. Previously, all of our interactions with candidates were through email and didn't allow us to provide the level of service that we strive to provide as an organization. We hire just frequently enough that it's a pain point, but not frequently enough that it rises to the level of urgency. When 300 people apply, we were crushed by the weight of it and did our best to just keep those candidates who made it to the next round moving forward. Realizing that this is a marketing effort, we want to continually improve the process for anyone interested in working at Fracture Atlas. The software system allows us to auto-reply to applicants, eliminates the back and forth previously required to schedule interviews, and allows us to more timely and personally correspond with applicants. In 2016, we also published our microsite, How We Work, a guide to working at Fractured Atlas. This site is partly for current staff and partly for those interested in what it's like to work here. We continually add things to the site and are working on a video tour of the New York office. The process. Hiring for any position at Fracture Atlas has essentially five stages. The first stage is the application packet review. For most positions, we request a cover letter, resume, handful of references, and depending on the position, a writing or work sample. The review stage allows us to identify, out of a field of 300 or so, about 30 candidates to advance to the second stage. We discuss with the group reviewing packets what criteria candidates need to possess. If you're looking for someone with strong writing skills, and I'm reviewing primarily for strong video editing skills, we might end up with a mismatched candidate pool going into round two. For more detail about how to review applicant packets, please see my How to Hire blog post. The second stage is the phone screener. This typically is a 20 to 30 minute phone call, no video. We conduct this round blind, except for the person's name, and, and we do this as a way to help adjust for bias that might creep in. Oh, I remember this person. I really like that they worked for Google. Doing this round blind allows us to calibrate only based on the answers to the questions we ask. During this round, one person typically asks the question, while a second person sometimes rides along silently taking notes. The third stage is the first in-person interview. It typically lasts about an hour. The fourth stage is the second in-person interview, and it's typically our third and final interview. During this interview, we usually include some project that approximates the type of work the candidate will be doing in the position. We take great pains to make sure that every candidate is given the same amount of time to work on the project so we can continue to evaluate each under the same conditions. In the fifth stage, that's the reference check stage. We typically check references for a few of the finalists as we usually end searches with more than one viable candidate. After those five stages, we make our final selection, 
make the offer, let the Berea Maine candidates know that we've gone in a different direction, and wish them the best. Things to keep in mind. While things like Glassdoor have made it easier for candidates to review companies and see the types of questions companies ask in interviews, this is a double-edged sword. So too is talking to your friend who works at the company to get a better sense for the interview process. The danger is that it turns candidates who might have been false positives into positives. Once hired, if they lack the knowledge, skills, and abilities to perform at the required level, chances are it's not going to end well. For this reason, we continually change parts of our process in the questions we ask, and also tend not to divulge publicly exactly how the evaluation part of the process works. As I mentioned, in addition to this intro video, there are additional required resources for you to review before participating in the hiring process. These resources include the 20 cognitive advice that screw up your decision, my how to hire blog post, and reading Sherm's acceptable and unacceptable inquiries for interviews and employment applications. If you're feeling particularly motivated, you can take Harvard's implicit attitudes test. Thank you again for your time and for being a part of this process.